What's going on folks? Welcome to another Scum video. I hope you're all doing well. This is the update from the 27th of September 2019. Hope you guys will enjoy it. The video has a few things I want to show you as well and some of the things from the last update that we had to deal with such as arrow duping etc. So I want to show you guys something pretty cool that I think you guys are going to like. Now this is all about the optimization mainly in this update. So I've got some clips I want to show you from a deathmatch I recently did. And the lag and the desync is pretty much non-existent now within Scum. There is still a lot they've got to do to optimize the game, but the main part is pretty much done and dusted. The player relevancy system is in the game now, and it's up to one kilometer around you. So anyone outside of a one kilometer radius, your computer won't care about. In fact, it doesn't even exist. So you're not going to be loading 64 players or 100 players information every second. It's just going to be loading everyone within a one kilometer radius. So guys, let's crack on. So for the first part of this patch, folks, I'm going to show you how to bury chests. Now, we've now got digging and burying. So this seems to only be working on loot boxes right now, and this is perfect for the solo player because only you are going to know exactly where you've hidden your loot. So try not to forget. So once you've got your shovel, you can even make improvised shovels as well and spades, etc. Once you've got your box, hold F over the box, go to set name, which you can do as well. So you can actually change your name. So we're going to change... Um, this name to Raykit's box, for example, which is something I would probably never actually name that. But that is what I'm going to be using it for for this tutorial. So once we've set the name, we're going to hold F over it and we're going to click Bury. Now, as I said before, this is actually a great feature because this is going to be perfect for the solo player who doesn't have a base, for someone who just wants to play and hide their loot without anyone knowing where they're going to find it. So as you're walking around, for example, you can see you're not going to have a clue where anyone's loot is unless you know where it is. And if you hold F over it, you can click unbury again. And what's going to happen is, is you're going to dig it up and your loot box is going to appear back on top of the terrain. So personally for me, this is a great feature and I thoroughly, thoroughly enjoy this. This is going to be cool. So here's another feature, guys, that I thought is pretty cool as well. So if you go into your crafting menu, go into um, your blueprint section, you'll see the old signs here. Now if you go along next to the improvised bed you'll see blank sign. Now this is pretty cool if you want to put these outside your base or even, well we don't really need to put these next to boxes now because you can actually name boxes so you can actually use these for your base. So if you just click F to put all the supplies in which is one plank, one, lo one long stick and uh, something to cut with then if you hold F, if you just click F over it you can change the text. So we're going to call this Rakit's house for example. So that doesn't work out too well on that board. So you can actually change the text to just break it or whatever. Now, this is a pretty cool feature because you can actually put this outside your base if you want people to know where you are or you can put anything you want on there, which is we're going to be finding some pretty serious things on these signs, I think, um, to say the very least. So, yep, there's the new blank sign feature there, guys. Okay, so before we actually carry on with the patch notes, I just want to try and test something out here, guys, because I think a lot of you have had the same issues. Now, there has been a, an arrow drooping glitch with the carbon arrows, maybe with the other arrows as well, I'm not too sure. So we're going to check the health of one single palisade. So as you can see, it's 100% right there. Let's just have a look. So you can see it's 100% right there on that palisade. So what we're going to do is we're going to fire it with a carbon arrow, see what the damage is fix it, then we're going to see what the damage is with the wooden arrows. Now, as far as I'm aware, it has been fixed, and the damage has now been decreased from 0 0.15 to 0 0.03, which is a hell of a lot of, um, which is a hell of a lot to decrease it by if, you know, people are going to want their bases to be safer, because people are just raiding bases with arrows. So, hopefully, let's see how much this actually goes down by. So, let's just have a quick look here. This is going to change everything for the base, um, hopefully if there isn't any other glitches in the game with the base stuff, which I'm guessing we'll soon find out. So let's fire this into, this is one single carbon arrow. Right, let's see what damage that has done. Right, okay, so that's gone from 100% to 99.98%. So you're going to actually have to fire many arrows um, to even get a single palisade down. Now that is very interesting to say the least. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to fire this carbon arrow now we've got the wooden arrow so what i'm going to do before i do anything i'm going to repair this wall this single palisade anyway and as you can see let's take that arrow out 
Right, let's put that on the floor. So now we've got our wooden arrow here. So that took it down by 0.02. So let's have a quick look. With the wooden arrow. So let's see what that damage has done with the wooden ones. 0.01. Okay, so that is really good to see. And I hope that that gives people a bit more confidence in building a base where people can't just destroy it by um, raiding arrow, like using arrows to raid, etc. Now, what I want to check is the durability of that arrow. So it's still showing 100%. So I want to try it again. And I want to see if the durability is going down on it. So let's have a look. So it's still showing 100%. Let's fire it again. Durability is still 100%. We'll just try one more time. And there we go. Okay, so the durability seem, still seems to be 100%, which that, in my eyes, definitely needs to be fixed. Okay, guys, I hope that really did help um, to show you about the arrows and stuff. So uh, let's move on to the next subject. So this is a clip that I wanted to show you guys from the beginning of the video. This is me playing a deathmatch on the Night Kingdom server. There's many people in the deathmatch here and I'm basically testing out to see what the lag of the desync is like because it has been absolutely horrendous recently. And as I said in the patch notes at the very beginning, go check it out for yourself and you can see some of the things that they have changed. Now the player relevancy um, update is now in the game for the optimization and there's plenty more stuff to come as well. So in some of these kills here, you'll see how instantly, um, how, how fast the character goes down when my bullets hit that trajectory hit that character rather so you can see that i'm dying pretty instantly when i'm getting shot which means that this is really working and this is a big deal for the game this is an incredibly big deal for the game so i'm hoping that there's going to be more things that these guys are going to be doing to update the game as well in terms of optimization there's a hell of a lot more they can do but right now this is a pretty big difference in in what they're doing so Hopefully this will show you guys as well that the lag of the desync has decreased. So hopefully you guys will enjoy that as much as I do. So we're going to have a quick look at the compass. Now as you guys can see I have a HUD at the very top of the screen which you might have seen in from the beginning of the video. Now they haven't really explained this too well. So don't jump on my case for this one because it's not explained very well at all personally. Now, there's four different levels of compass, which I'm guessing is four different levels of HUD, which you can see at the top. Now, as far as I'm aware, there are a few different types of compass. So you've got the advanced, you've got, um, you've got the basic compass, and you've got the primitive compass. I'm sure there's another one. Um, but we're going to go into detail on how this actually works on a separate video when I find out more from the devs themselves exactly how this works. Because, uh, like I said, I don't want to give you guys false information with this. And I did mention this in another video because I didn't think it was explained too well. So I wasn't too sure if you had to have a certain level survival skill, which you can see um, over here. Which my survival skill at the minute is 682,000 out of 1 million. So uh, the higher survival skill level you have, and depending on the type of compass you have, so if I have an advanced compass, for example, um, you can actually see um, at the top. So with the advanced compass, you can actually see I've got north, northeast, east, southeast, south, and southwest. So if I was to take that basic compass off and put the advanced compass in, you can still see that it's pretty much given me the same because my survival skill level is too low. So if I was to take that off and put the basic on, it's still giving me the same, which means that I would need a high level survival skill to get all of the degrees in there as well, which some people do like that and some people don't. Me, I personally do because I can read a compass, I can read the degrees um, and all that good stuff as well. So if I was in a firefight, I could pinpoint the exact degree that that person's firing at and then get the squad to fire into that direction. So I can kind of see what they've done here. I can kind of see what they've done. Let's go back over to these other compasses. So if I was to drop the primitive compass and take the advanced, then you can see it does add a little bit more. But my, survival, my, my survival is still too low to give it all of the degrees around it. So yeah, basically what I would personally do is just try and find an advanced compass and just keep that on you till you get your skill level up. And then obviously you'll get more degrees at the top. That's all I can really say for now. But the compass is going to make a big difference within the game as well. Um, 
with that, I just want to show you guys the map. So at the moment, you can see my character is in between D2 and D3. Now, it's given me like a weird sort of glowing thing. I thought it was just going to be a red dot. I don't know if this is going to have to be a patch. But I heard it was going to be a red dot. But at the minute, it's given me some kind of radar thing, which looks very, very strange. I did like the previous blue triangle. But, I mean, this is pretty cool, I suppose. I don't know. Just It looks pretty cool. It looks pretty futuristic in my eyes. Um, but, yeah, I thought they was going to have the red dot. And that's what they did say in the patch notes as well, which you can see in an image here. So, yeah, not really too sure about that. But the compasses, I can kind of see how they work. But I would like to go into detail with that on a separate video. So just make sure you've got a high-level... Um, survival skill and if you do find the advanced compass then just keep it on you and then literally just try and um, get your survival skill up and then you can watch your compass increase as well so yeah that's pretty much it as far as i know for the compasses right now guys okay so guys i don't want to be too long with this because the video is getting very very long now for a patch update but there's a lot to go through so let's just have a quick look at the new vests the new armored plated vest shall i say so you can see the armor tactical vests here. I'm just going to literally show you my character without one. There's me without one. And I'm going to add this one on here. So I kind of feel a bit like Robocop. Now this is going to weigh an absolute ton. So it weighs 6 kilos. Now that's that's quite a lot. Now this is the armor designed for soldiers in high threat hostile, hostile fire situations. Now there's three levels guys. Because they've changed the way these, these work. So there's three levels now. Level 1 is stab proof vests level two is military and police vests and level three are these ones that you're looking at right here these are going to be the hardcore vests and they now do them in every color so obviously before you'd only get white for the heaviest um for the best armor now but now you can get them in all the colors you want that's basically what they've done so you're still going to find the stab proof vests around you're still going to find the police and military vests but the arm military armoured ones all look like this and come in all the colours that the stab pre vest and the military vest would have been as well. So we've got, I think there's another one. I can't really find it. I've just run away from it and I've already lost it somewhere here on the ground somewhere. But you get them in all the different colours and you can see the images there as well. So hopefully that would be pretty cool. Enjoy. So for the final part of this patch, there has been a new location that has been finished, which is a D4 airbase, which is up here in D4 at the top left. You can see that here at the new airfield. So we're going to go and have a quick look and see exactly what's underneath. Now, if you don't want a spoiler, then do not continue watching. You can find out for yourself. So we're going to go and have a look, and this is going to be my first time looking as well. So if we look through here, let's go through here and have a quick look and see what we are to expect when we go into the new bunker. This is looking pretty cool, and it's also gonna be very dangerous. Now I'm guessing that you can actually go from bunker to bunker and find obviously all different types of loot. You can see the amount of loot here already spawning in. And there are mechs inside here as well. So this is actually pretty interesting. I didn't expect this. Can you actually open up here as well? Okay, so you can actually even go deeper into the underground. Um, bunker here so look at all the loot there is tons of loot here lots of ammo now there is an aircraft down here somewhere i'm pretty sure i've seen here we go so we've actually got some aircraft here they look like some form of mig i think i'm not entirely sure not really up on my military aircraft but this this is actually pretty awesome and there's a, even another way through over there as well which i think it connects all of them together so, let's have a quick look and go over here. And we'll just go around and go through that door that I just opened. Where was it? Around here somewhere. Here we go. Okay, so there's a... Whoa, okay. Damn, this is going to be a heavy PvP area. Getting out of here alive is going to be almost near impossible. Interesting to say the least though. There's a lot of aircraft. That one looks like it's in working order. That's pretty interesting. So, yeah, you can see that there's an underground area here, and the amount of loot is just ridiculous. There is tons and tons and tons of loot here. And food. So, uh, yeah, that's literally it for this patch, guys. Like I said, 
please go and check out the patch notes down below because there's a lot of bug fixes which I think you guys are going to be very interested in reading as well so please go and check that out let me know what you think if you did like the video please don't forget to like it that is most important smash that subscribe button and uh, just leave me a cheeky comment and let me know what you thought so uh, with that being said guys stay safe peace out and I'll catch you in the next one take care